you see in this color. Allah data will have five shares and Kalahan will have cycle. Uh, and the company would would have the business, would not have the money to start the business, would have a running business, it will run the business, the people would be the same. Kalahan and Allah data would be directors, they would, um, would be running the uh, you see business in the same way and would be dividing the profit in the same way, but the owner will be the company and in this way, their private properties will be saved from any future loss. This was an uh, introduction coming to the classification and types of companies. Uh, in the literature, you can come across three types of companies. You see, uh, like uh, number one type of company is called charter companies. Charter companies. And this is specific to the United Kingdom. You see. This type of companies are created, are used to be created, you see, in the United Kingdom. And the procedure used to be that if some people wanted to get a company created, they used to, to file a petition. Uh, okay, uh, my voice is, voice is clear, again asking you. The voice is clear, someone told me the voice is not clear. If the voice is not clear, please let me know if it is clear. Sir, clear hai aapke waas. Clear hai. Okay. If, if you can't hear me properly, there's some, there will be some, uh, some problem with the, your, your, your laptop, your mobile. Otherwise, I'm trying to shout. Okay. So, what in the case of charter companies, what happens? People, they file a petition with the crown. Who is crown? King or queen? They, they call it crown. So the crown, you see, grant a charter and company is created. The best example you see with us is the East India Company. That was a charter company created by then crown and which came and which made a way for the British rule in the Pakistan and India subcontinent. All right. Uh, nowadays, you see, even nowadays, these companies can be created in the United Kingdom, but for not trade and business purposes. They can be created for the purpose of, uh, you see, uh, to incorporate learned societies and professional bodies only. This is category number one, with which we don't have any relation on. Number two companies are called statutory companies, which are prevalent and which are created in our country. Statutory companies are created, actually, they are called statutory companies because they are created through a statutory law, a statute of the parliament, an act of the parliament. You see? So the interested people or the interested uh, governmental organization, you see that uh, requests the, the, the parliament, most probably the government, you see who's the bill to the parliament that you must have this type of uh, company. You see, and uh, the parliament, you see, grants incorporation. Parliament passes an act through which this company is created. The best example in our country is of the statutory companies are, besides other, the universities. Like uh, the university you are studying in is the National University of Modern Languages. It was created by the then Parliament of Pakistan through the National University of Modern Languages ordinance to year 2000. Similarly, the International Islamic University was created through an act of parliament called International University Ordinance 1980. So now universities are corporate bodies. They are juristic personalities. They can buy and sell in their own name. They can sue and can be sued through their own name. They can have assets. They can have uh, many rights and duties which a natural person would have. Okay, so this is about statutory companies. And uh, 
there are other companies as well for, for the purpose of trade and uh, you see uh, uh, PTCL, OGTCL, all these are creation of act of parliament. So they are for trade purpose. So many examples, but I gave you the example of Third form of uh, companies are called registered companies, and these are the companies with which we have concern, with which we will be dealing throughout our semester. Okay, they are, they are ordinary companies, which are uh, which are in most of the cases created for the purpose of trade and business. Okay, and why I'm saying it could be trade and business, I'll explain it to you later. So this is the third categories. And they are created under, they are created by a governmental organization called Security and Exchange Commission of Pakistan. Under, uh, you see, the company's ordinance 2017. You see? Uh, and the creation of companies through registration is the most commonly used means of, and I would say that for the trade, uh, for the trade and business. Uh, Purpose, this is the only way, this is the only means of forming a company. And uh, these are, as I told you, the companies are registered by the Security and Exchange Commission of Pakistan. Okay. Uh, the companies are uh, basically divided into two kinds. Registered companies are basically, you see, are uh, uh, as concerning its uh, sheer uh, as concerning the liability liability of the members. The registered companies can be divided into the two uh, fundamental categories. One category is called company limited by share. In company limited by share, you see whether it's a private company or public company, you see the liability. The limit of the liability of the members, that is to say shareholders, is up to their investment. Okay. I mean, if the company is wound up, if the company is wound up, you see the li liability of the members would be to pay for the shares which they haven't paid. Previously, before the Act, uh, the Companies Act 2017, you see, uh, shares could be sold on credit as well, but under the present law, no, no, oh, you see, every, every share must be, shall be sold on cash then. Therefore, you see, um, liability is nothing, no liability, because every shareholder has already paid for all his shares. Yes, at the most, what can happen to, to a shareholder in the case of a company limited by uh, uh, shares that he can lose what he has uh, invested in the company. Okay, but his private properties are saved from confiscation, from attachment, and sold by the broker. Right. As against this, there is another category of companies which is called company limited by guarantee. You see what happens in the company. These type of companies are never registered for a trade or business purpose. They are. They are uh, created and incorporated for a charitable purpose, a non-trade business purpose, charitable purpose for, for helping the orphans or for, uh, for, for development of science and technology or things like that. So since in a it is called guarantee company, since the guarantee company has got no business, since the guarantee company makes no profit, that is why that is why, you see, uh, the, the members, they don't invest money. They don't invest money as they do in the case of company limited by shares. So here the question arises that if the company, if the guarantee company is wound up and it has both loss, then who will repair this loss? Who will? So the members, they give guarantee in terms of uh, money that I will provide this much of money and for repairing the loss. So they provide guarantee that they will be liable up to a certain amount to repair the loss of the company. That's why this is called guarantee company. Okay, this uh, don't do that. Then coming to the, uh, the firm, firm partnership, running its business more than 
with members of more than 20 people. It is not enough. It is not enough. Why it is not enough? I mean, you can't ask me what is the logic behind it. Okay? But uh, in, my, in my humble opinion, the logic is to safeguard the interests of the people. I mean, if the number of members in a partnership is um, more than 20 in hundreds, then to protect their rights would be a big difficult task. Why? You see, law requires that there must not be a company having more than 20 members. And if a company runs a business with more than 20 members, it has to reduce its number. And it would be, it would be a, a a fine would be imposed upon its uh, business if it runs business uh, with more than 21 members. Okay. I mean, I, another question that arises here that how the court would come to know that there is a company which is running a business with more than 21 members. I mean, the court ha hasn't got any email out. Obviously, someone would uh, inform the court, someone would file a petition that either one of the partners or even an outsider can file a petition if he has relevance that if there is a partnership which has more than 25 members. So the court will, you see, warn the company not to carry on the business with more than 20 members. And it would require the company to uh, to reduce, either to reduce its, its number to 20 or else the state will compulsorily convert it into a private limited company. Okay, this was about. Uh, uh, there is an exemption to certain certain uh, bodies, certain entities that they can run. They can have partnership with more than twenty members. Like uh, you see, uh, a society body or association formed under any other law. If a society or body or association which resembles partnership uh, and it has been bought, registered, it has been given registration under any law enforcing in the country, they are exempted from section 9 of the Companies Act, which requires that the number of members must not be more than 20. So, number two is a joint family carrying on a joint family business. Just suppose that. Family jointly is running the business. Father, uncle, you see, brother, sister, so many people, and their number goes to more than 21. They can validly carry on their business, provided they are family, they are family members, and they are jointly running a single business or a chain of businesses. You see, in that case, they are allowed to do so under Section 9. Okay, and the next is uh, uh, the exemption is provided to the two or more joint family businesses. If they join each other and their number goes beyond 25, they are also exempted from this. And they can have their business with more than 20 members. Then lastly comes uh, the partnership of lawyers, accountants, and any other profession. If this is a partnership between lawyers, accountants, doctors, or any other professions, you see, they can validly uh, have their partnership with more than 20 partners. Okay? That's all about this. Then coming to the, uh, you see, you must know this is the requirement, you see of uh, uh, the Companies Act 2017, and this is logically, uh, logic as well, that every company must have its name, its designation, okay? I mean, how can it be known that what, what business is? Just suppose I'm running a business, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I have a business of uh, millions and trillions, either as a sole proprietorship or with a partnership. Okay, and we don't have any name. You are just selling commodity, having no name of your business. You see, that can be possible in case of partnership, in case of uh, sole proprietorship. But this is impossible 
to run a business without a name under company form of business. So, so the very first requirement is that the company must have a name. You see, if some people prepare documents, they apply for the registration of a company, and they say, we, 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 we don't want to have a name, they can't be granted registration. They must have a name for the company. A name is very important. Why? Because this is the name. This is the name which gives, you see, good reputation in the business world to the company. And this is the name which eventually becomes, which becomes, eventually becomes an asset of the company in the form of, a, in the form of a goodwill. You see, like you see, uh, Tazi, Barta, Vasco, these are the names. But these are the, not only company names, not only trade names, but they are goodwill. If you are told that this biscuit, which I'm offering you, is Tazeeb biscuit, you will have no hesitation in having and buying and eating, you see, some, something 